Now here is question number 31. The dimensional formula of 1 upon mu naught c square d phi e by dt is same as that of where given as phi is electric flux and c is the speed of light, t is time and mu naught is permeability of the free space. So as we know that the speed of light is given by 1 upon mu naught epsilon naught. Now squaring both sides we can get c square equals 1 by mu naught epsilon naught and the expression 1 upon mu naught c square can be written here by epsilon naught. So the expression that is given in the question we can write 1 by mu naught c square d phi e by dt can be further written by now 1 by mu naught c square is equal to epsilon naught so that's why epsilon naught d phi e upon dt this expression is famously known as displacement current so the dimension of this expression will be same as that of dimension of current so we will go with option number one that is current now let us move to the next question here is question number 32 a charged particle of mass small m and charge q enters in a region of uniform magnetic field as shown in figure the magnitude of change in the linear momentum due to magnetic field will be what now let us consider the situation here as we can see the charged particle is about to release from here tangentially suppose the center of curvature of this circle or circular part is somewhere here it means we can consider this as radius of curvature now let us drop a perpendicular something like this suppose this angle is theta so this will be 90 minus theta the total is theta means this total this is 90 and this is 90 minus theta so this will also be equal to theta again this is 90 minus theta so this angle gets value theta this is L given in the question and here this is the distance between peripheral point and center of curvature which is equal to R so from this triangle we can have sine of theta equals perpendicular upon hypotenuse that is L by R L given in the question that is root 3 mv divided by 2 q times b r the radius we know very well that when we throw a charged particle absolutely perpendicular to the magnetic field it makes or it executes a uniform circular motion of radius given by mv upon qb so therefore we got the value of sine theta from here that is root 3 divided by 2 now we can calculate theta from here that is 60 degree now finally we have we have got the value of theta means the particle when comes out of the region it will make an angle theta degree or 60 degree here with constant speed so we can break the components and final speed v2 will be given by v cos 60 i cap plus v sin 60 j cap on the other hand the initial speed v1 was just v in horizontal right direction that is i cap so the change in momentum p or delta p will be given by p2 minus of p1 in vector form we can write like this now what is p2 m times v cos 60 1 by 2 i cap plus of m times sin 60 root 3 by 2 v j cap minus of 
mv i cap. After solving, we will get delta p in vector form as minus of mv upon 2 i cap plus root 3 by 2 mv j cap. Now, if we calculate the magnitude of this change in momentum, we will have delta p as mv. So, therefore, we can say that our option number 1 is absolutely correct. Now, we will move to the next question that is question number 33. A wire of certain length carries a current capital I. It is bent to form a circle of one ton and the magnetic field at the center is P1. Now, it is further bent to form a coil of four turns. Then, the magnetic field at the center in that situation is B2. Now find out the ratio of B1 and B2. Suppose the length of wire is L. Now this L is bent to form a circle of radius R1. So we can say that the periphery of circle that is 2 pi R1 must be equal to length from here we got the value of R1 that is L by 2 pi and therefore we can have the magnetic field at the center of this circular coil which will be given by mu naught I upon 2 times R1 that is L by 2 pi 2 2 cancel we got the expression for B1 that is mu naught I times pi divided by L equation number 1. Now next, the wire having length L is now made in the shape of circular coil having 4 turns. Now let us consider the radius of coil is R2, then the total length of circumference will be what? 4 times 2 pi R2, which must be equal to the length of wire from which it has drawn. Now, we got the value of R2 in this case that is given by L by 8 pi. Now, the magnetic field due to the coil of 4 turns will be given by B equals 4 times mu naught I divided by 2 times R2 that is L by 8 pi. If we solve, we will find B2 as 16 times mu naught i times pi divided by L. This is equation number 2. Now, if we take the ratio of B1 is to B2, we can get the value after just looking at it, 1 is to 16. So, this is our final answer. Now, if you search the option, we will find that option 1 is absolutely matching with our answer. So, this was question number 33. Now, let us proceed to the next question that is question number 34. The instantaneous value of current at a given instant is 1 ampere. The peak value of current is 5 by 3 ampere at that instant in which the question is talking about. The potential difference between point A and point B at the same instant will be what? So, some data in this question are given. The question is talking about a particular instant. At that particular instant, I naught is given in the question. That is 5 by 3 ampere. The instantaneous current. Suppose the equation of instantaneous current is given by I equals I naught sin omega t plus or minus phi. Or you can just take phi naught. We have considered that the phase difference between voltage and current is phi naught. So we will be what? V naught sin omega t. We can consider it. Now, what are the things given in the question? R equals 3 ohm, x equals 4 ohm. So, we can have the impedance that is under root 3 square plus 4 square, 5 ohm. Now, we have the impedance. At any instant of time t, the value of instantaneous current is 1 ampere. The peak value is 5 by 3 ampere sin of omega t minus phi naught. Now we got 
साइन ओमेगा टी माइनस फाइव नॉट इक्वल्स थ्री बाई फाइव विच इज इक्वल टू साइन ऑफ थर्टी सेवन डिग्री सो वी गॉट एन इक्वेशन ओमेगा टी माइनस फाइव नॉट इज इक्वल टू थर्टी सेवन डिग्री एंगल नाउ वी कैन हैव द वैल्यू ऑफ फाइव फ्रॉम द इंपिडेंस ट्राइंगल दिस इज आर दैट इज थ्री दिस इज एक्स एल दैट इज फोर नाउ यूजिंग द इंपिडेंस ट्राइंगल वी कैन हैव दिस वैल्यू फाइव नॉट हियर फाइव नॉट वी विल गेट फिफ्टी थ्री डिग्री यूजिंग इंपिडेंस ट्राइंगल so we got the value of omega t as 90 degree at that instant the omega t was absolutely 90 so the potential difference between a and b v a and b is given by we have the instantaneous equation v not sin of omega t sin omega t that is sin 90 equals 1 answer will be v not and v not will be given by i not multiplied by z I not has the value five by three multiplied by z five. So ultimately v equals twenty five divided by three volt. Ultimately v equals twenty five by three volt. Now if we search the option, we'll find that option number three is matching, absolutely correct. So option number three, we will mark and proceed to the next question. That is question number thirty five. Now here is question number thirty five. A semicircular conducting wire of radius small a, moving perpendicular to the uniform magnetic field B with speed under root two times small v, as shown in figure. The EMF induced across the wire will be what? Since we all know that the perpendicular component of speed means v, that is perpendicular to. Length of the rod is responsible for induced EMF. Therefore, we can say that the induced EMF here will be E equals. v perpendicular multiplied by magnetic field multiplied by here the nature of the rod is not linear the rod is of semi circular so we have to take effective length so l effective v perpendicular that is v root 2 cos of 45 degree multiplied by the magnetic field b here L effect two will be the diameter, twice a. Now, v root two into cos forty five will give you value v b two a. So, two v b into a will be the induced EMF here. So this is the our final answer. And if we go through the option, we will find that option two is absolutely correct. Now let us proceed to the next question. 